What's good, YouTube? It's your boy. Today, I'm going to show you the fastest way to level uh, to 45 and beyond in Elyon. Um, Elyon is all about game knowledge. And I say this over and over. The more game knowledge that you learn, the more that you research, the better player you will become. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the buffs um, that will help you level as well as the grind spots and the amount of questing you want to do versus grinding in order to reach 45. And the goal is always to reach 45 because uh, level difference in this game actually influences damage taken, uh, which relates to damage uh, ER as well as damage uh, dealt to opponent. Um, so whoever has the highest level always has somewhat of an advantage. Not to say you can't win if someone's one level or maybe two levels above you, but when it gets to that three gap, it, it becomes a little bit unwinnable for certain matchups, uh, especially if you get caught or you slip up. Um, that being said, let's go ahead and hop into it. All right, so I'm gonna hide my UI again really quickly. All right, so let's start with the buffs, okay? You want to know exactly what buffs you you need to uh, utilize in order to level efficiently. For those of you that want to spend rubies, Star's Blessing is 100% recommended because it increases your hunting XP and item drop rate by 10%. Um, I like to say that this game is a, is a subscription-based game, even though it's free to play. Uh, if you subscribe to the Star's Blessing, that uh, 30 day blessing will ensure that you get the maximum output of the time you spend in the game. Highly recommend it. Not only are you supporting the game, but you're supporting your growth of your character and just streamlining it. Um, there are pets that come with the EXP line. And then there is the yellow tree, which comes with the EXP game. Uh, outside of those, you also have friendship tokens, which can be spot. You get these from leveling up as well as certain clan missions. These can be, per you can purchase a pet if you save accessories, but the main thing I'm focused on here is EXP. I would not use it for the weekly time just because you can have multiple characters for that if you really want more weekly time. And then you can also get more uh, EXP potions through, uh, the PvP track reward, but I typically go for the dimensional time increase, uh, and I'll show you why later. Uh, so those are most of the XP buffs, and then you have the clan XP buff, which can be bought in your clan menu, your clan shop. You purchase that XP increase potion, um, as long as your clan leader has researched it which I just finished researching our mana elixir. So I'm registering that. And then now I'm going to research the treasure map as well. Since I'm here, um, we have two days time on our growth support box, which will also help. All right. But those are the majority of the HP boosts, um, from this game. Uh, let me double check. Yeah. Those are the majority of the HP boosts outside of the ones that, that you get from Twitch drops from watching Kakao or uh, other sponsored streamers on Twitch. Um, so outside of the EXP uh, boosts, I want to remind you guys that I started this character less than three days ago. Um, I got to level 44 yesterday. I'm already 18% in. I stopped the grind in order to perfect my PvP build. So I'm not even truly, like, truly hardcore exp grinding i'm learning how to master my character and master my build so that being said um that should let you know how fast you can level in this game if you play efficiently uh, i wouldn't use any of those exp buffs until the f like higher than level 40 i mean 43 to 44 43 to 45 is generally when you when you want to start using your exp buffs um but to start if you're Vulpin, you start at the bottom right hand of the map. If you're Antara, you, you start at the top right. But I'm just going to go from Vulpin's side, and you just have to mirror this for Antari. So you're going to do the quest line, get out of the tutorial around level 20, 
you come up to Laughing Skull Moor um, through the quest line, make your way from Firefly to your first foothold, and then after your first foothold, uh, you start exploring the conflict zones. Uh, and oh, you go from Bluegill to Firefly to Foothold, and then you start exploring, exploring the other like actual conflict zones. Jerem Marsland's Executioners, Van Verontari, it's a windy plantation and malignant boundary. Um, so once you get to this point in the quest line, when you're about 33, 34, you're, you, you can either grind or continue to quest because you're now in the range to where you can go to the malignant boundary uh, or the, uh, the actual borderline and start grinding. Uh, so if you have lower gear score, like if your gear score is under 300, it might be difficult, depending upon your class, to grind at German Marshlands. If you're a caster or a slayer, you might not have a hard time farming at German Marshlands. If you are a smurf and you have a higher level character, Executioner's Fort. If you cannot grind in this area for either A, your gear score is under 300, or B, um, it's too packed in both channels. What you can do is find mobs nearby uh, in in the 35 to 36 zone. Um, you can either farm on the left or the right of these two outposts. And you can look at the mobs here at Eastern Front. You're pretty much just farming the monsters. You want to far farm a pretty good rotation. I found a good rotation of the boars right next to the mountain about here. So it should be the same uh, for Windy Plantation. And I know closer to Executioners, there's a lot of mobs from Atari about here on the left side of their border as well. So you can grind there as well as the, 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 uh, the guards. This is from 33 to about 37, 38, depending upon your class. Let's say 38. And outside of that, you're going to also be doing your weekly dimensional portal uh, once you hit level 40. Um, make sure that when that pops up, you're doing it level 40 plus. But let's say you still need EXP from 37 to 40. Uh, so 37 to 40, you can do Dragon's Garden. Honestly, you can go into Dragon Garden at 35. Um... And you can grind all the way up to level 40. Dragon Garden is that good of experience. And it has multiple channels. If someone's on Vulpin's side, you go to Antari's side. Pretty much the first room with all the, uh, the mass amount of mobs are the best places to grind in Dragon's Garden to level 40. Um, once you hit around 38, though, you can switch to Odin's Sky. Especially if you have decent item level you can switch to odin sky and i recommend going to the harpies um as long as you have a, around 400 410 gear score you should be able to clear harpies at a decent speed no matter what the class i was doing it even on a warlord which warlord has the hardest start they don't even they're not even a class until they get berserk smash um and i was still able to clear harpies at like 400 410 gear score without a problem so your daily dimensional portal is highly important uh, regardless of your, your like at 35 plus to 40. Uh, at 40 plus though, you want to do Exiles Isle, okay? So you can do Exiles Isle literally all the way until 43. And after 43, you're going to start doing Black Mecha Basin. I would still recommend doing Exiles for your weekly, but for your daily, you're just going to switch at 43. You're going to stop doing Odin's and Dragon, and you're going to start doing Black Mesa. This is er, Black Mecha. This is for leveling. If you want Mani XP, you can still do Dragon Garden, but for leveling your actual character at 43 plus, you can grind to 45 of Black Mecha. Keep in mind, though, at Black Mecha, do not farm over someone else. If you see someone else in an area, please do not farm on top of them because you gimp your own XP and you gimp their XP. Please find another corner, another node in the map 
go in there or change channels and find an area where there is no one farming and get you a three to four pack rotation. That's all you need is a three to four pack rotation because the mobs respond very fast. You don't have to take over multiple spots and, and go into other people's zones. All you need is three to four packs, please, because the congestion in Black Mecca is really bad. But still, that being said, from 43 to 45, Black Mecca is still the best daily portal to do. Okay, you guys? Now, outside of that daily uh, for 43 to 45, um, you can start doing Steel Highland around 38 to 39 if you want to grind open world and you don't want to do executioners. So 38 to... 39 you can start still highland depending upon and you can farm this all the way up until really I would say 42 43 uh, The guards are decent, but then there's also the spirits and there's multiple locations for the spirits So there's a spirit here for Vulpin There's a, a spirit grind spot here for Vulpin right near the border. This one's near the guards This one's near the uh, the, uh, the border of the next zone and then for Antari, the spirits are about here near the, the boundary and closer to the lost breath here. Um, and then, uh, so those are the two locations that you can grind. You can, And you can grind these spirits really all the way up until like 43. The XP starts falling off and you want to focus and save all your materials for Black Mecha. You can still grind open world, still do get money, but it's not going to be great experience. The majority of your experience is going to be coming from Mecha. Um, that being said, if Mecca is overrun, it's not worth spending your daily portal there. So it's better to farm when there's not a lot of people there. If there's other people there, just pour it out, go do something else. What I noticed is that guards no longer give an amazing amount of XP compared to normal mobs. So if this is a golden rule, if guards on whatever level you are farming are full, and they're packed, there's too many people there, you keep getting PK'd. Go to another zone closer to your level. Like, let's say I am 37. I would probably go to somewhere in Exiles and I would click click the node and I would find some mobs that I can farm pretty easily, like the beetles or the golems. You just need to find a rotation. Or I would go to Twilights at, uh, or at 40, 42. Or at 42, you can come down here to like Grave Robbers and um, also Twisted Marshlands. These are just some spots that I've found. For, for Antari, uh, you can come up here to... Uh, you can come up here to the Shipwreck Dragons or you can do the Mechanized Dragon Shrine at 40, 42. But pretty much you just have to like look at the mobs Check the recommended item level. You can, sh you should be able to efficiently farm anything that's like 30 item level below you. Okay, you guys, uh, or 30 item level above you is what you want to be aiming for. You're still within the range to compete at those mobs. It depends on your class, depends on how fast you clear, but that is that is somewhat of a of a, a rule of thumb. Okay, um, so I think I've covered a lot of information from level zero to 45. Like I said, there there are a few levels in between where you'll have to grind uh, as you're questing. Um, I know 29 was one. Essentially what happens there is you just wanna make sure you're doing all of your yellow and your green quests. If your yellow and green quests don't take you to the level that you need, uh, you literally just start grinding wherever the quest left you off. Um, before 34 and like I said after 34 the majority of your levels are gonna come from grinding the quest is for gear and progression at 36 you want to make sure at like around here it's gonna leave you off around Martyr's Chamber and Drake Scale and then for Ontari it's gonna leave you off around uh, the Falling Mountain and, and Dragon Grind Slope you want to make sure around 36 you complete all your yellow quests and all your green quests, regardless if you're grinding or not. That's just to make sure you get your growth quests. For you new players, growth quests are going to give you epic scrolls, which 
allow you to buy or legendary scrolls allow you to buy epic skills and these epic skills are essential for every class if you don't know your first essential epic skill do some research because you don't want to waste this scroll because at 36 you're going to need this to efficiently grind uh up into the level 40s and, and beyond you will eventually get around seven to eight of these at level 45 i believe you get your eighth um at level 45 and 500 gear score i got my eighth i don't know if it was level dependent or if it was gear score dependent but i got a quest that popped up and gave me my eighth uh legendary scroll for an epic skill on my slayer so you will get more however you just don't want to waste your first ones because you want to make sure you're building your character efficiently to grind um so yeah like i said i think i've covered a lot of information Thank you guys for watching. If there's anything I left out, please drop it in the comment section below. Peace and love, you guys.